or that part. Um, yeah, before we start, shall we start with a prayer? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for all these blessings which you are giving us on the Sabbath day, dear Father. Thank you for the message which we've just heard that, Lord, we know our minds are so carnal, but we are claiming 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 5, that you may bring down those strongholds in, our, in us, dear God, and set us free. I pray that, Lord, you may transform our hearts, you may renew our minds, that we may do only that which pleases you, dear God. As we study your word, I pray that you send your Holy Spirit and to come and teach us to dwell in us. And Lord, and give us hearts which are receptive to your word. And when we have heard, when we have studied these things, help us to go and do. Thank you for being with us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Amen. Okay. So today um, we continue so, so our reading in chapter 39. The title is Give Ye Them to Eat. Yesterday uh, we read uh, just two paragraphs, but we didn't have a chance to, to comment. And I know um, we only had one comment about how, you know, if we trust God, if we, we do not question and we don't, we don't find difficulties in the things which we have and think that we've got little and we can't do much with the little we have then we are bringing obstacles in our way. I'm just waiting for the reading to be portrayed and I'll just read those last, the two paragraphs which we read yesterday and just give everyone a chance to, to comment. We last read um, where it says, when the question comes home to your heart, when the question comes home to your heart. I'll just read that again. It says, when the question comes home to your heart, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Let not your answer be the response of unbelief. When the disciples heard the Savior's direction, Give ye them to eat. All the difficulties arose in their minds. They questioned, shall we go away into the villages to buy food? So now when the people are destitute of the bread of life, the Lord's children suggest, sorry, the Lord's children question, shall we send for someone from afar to come and feed them? But what said Christ? Make the men sit down. And he fed them there. So when you are surrounded by souls in need, know that Christ is there. Commune with him. Bring your barley loaves to Jesus. Again, we being reminded of total trust in God, always running back to Christ, always asking for his providence and not doubting because Christ is with us and he can increase whatever little we have. The means in our possession may not seem to be sufficient for the work, but if we will move forward in faith, believing in the all-sufficient power of God, abundant resources will open before us. If the work be of God, he himself will provide the means for its accomplishment. He will reward honest, simple reliance upon him. The little that is wisely and economically used in the service of the Lord of heaven 
will increase in the very act of imparting. In the hand of Christ, the small supply of food remained undiminished until the farming multitude were satisfied. If we go to the save to the source of all strength with our hands of faith outstretched to receive, we shall be sustained in our work, even under the most forbidding circumstances, and shall be enabled to give to others the bread of life. This reminds of um, me of the woman of Zarephath. I think that was commented as well yesterday that that oil did not run, the, no, the flour and the oil, they, they didn't run out because this woman trusted in God and Elijah and the woman and his son during that famine. They continued eating and having food throughout that famine because it just didn't run dry. So we just need to do think big as well. You know, when we bring prayer requests to cry to God, sometimes we are just thinking so small, especially if it's the work of God. We have to say, I want to reach the whole of the UK. And God can do my, mighty works if we are sincere in our asking. And God can use us mightily. Um, yeah, so... I don't know if anyone, I mean, we didn't comment much on these two paragraphs. Um, it is your chance now to comment. Sister Charlene, please go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Um, yeah, when I was going to maybe do, do mission work in uh, Mozambique in 2018, I was just concerned. I was like, Lord, but what about this? What about that? I'm only going to get food. Uh, what about money for my phone? Uh, I had to cross. I had to cross the border every month because you could only stay in Mozambique for a month. You had to go back to South Africa, and then go back uh, maybe two days a day and cross the border back. And uh, I had to get a visa every time. Um, so, uh, so I was asking the, all these questions to the Lord, <clears throat> and I had questions. And so I decided, okay, I'm just going to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, every need was provided. Then nothing. I I I'd, I'd no nothing short of nothing, and there was um, uh, some friends in South Africa. People I got to know in South Africa when I when I crossed the border every time, and this the people started sponsoring me. This and every time I needed money to cross the border, uh, I didn't even ask. They just I hardly knew them. I got to know them actually when I was staying with another lady, uh, and and every time they they. They, when I was there, they gave me money. I was able to cross the border. The visa was taken care of, and I lacked absolutely nothing. And it was just astounding how God took care of every tiny little thing. I mean, little things that I needed, just the smallest thing, the biggest thing. There was lack of nothing. So sometimes we think, oh, but if I have to do this, but how's God going to provide? But God is the Bible is God has thousands of ways to providing. So we need we need not care. We if you God says go. You just go, and and God owns all the kettles on the hills. There's no reason for us to doubt Him. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing a powerful Amen. testimony. Thank you, Brother Desire. Please go ahead. Amen. Amen to that testimony. Yes, um, it, it's it's powerful. I think these truths we we. We have them throughout the Bible, and uh, uh, I was saying yesterday, um, one thought that came to my mind that there's a reason why God says without faith it is impossible to please him. You know, God works with faith. The devil doesn't use faith. The devil works with your eyes, with your feelings, with your senses. Mm -hmm. he, he brings things to you. God works with faith. He says, you walk, we walk not by sight, but by faith. So, this is the difference now between uh, God's strategy and God's, uh, God's strategy and Satan's strategy. 
So if we are to please God, because he says without faith it is impossible to, to please him. Um, he says whoever comes to God must believe. So this is not a suggestion to have faith. This is not an option. We must believe that God is and that he is the rewarder of them that seek him by faith. So this applies even to mission work. And I think as we're saying here, when Jesus is giving the command, give them to eat. Uh, I said yesterday that this is a command that he's given us. It's sad. I think it pains, uh, it, it, it's more of an insult to God or it saddens God's heart that uh, most of the excuses as to why we still haven't done the work it's because we are waiting for God to, to make provisions or to give us this talent. Some they say, you know, it's interesting that the, 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 the paragraph says, um, bring your barley loaves. How many were there? There was five of them and two fishes. So God is saying, bring what you have. This is what he has always done with Moses. He says, what have you, what have you got in your hand? So God is not he is not asking us to do what he knows that we can't do because he knows that we're not going to do anything anyway in our strength. He wants to do things, but he wants to see whether we trust and believe that he is a mighty God, he is a creator. You know, it's easy to believe Genesis chapter 1 as history, but sad to say that uh, many of us believers, we don't believe that God is still creating. He still has the power to create, even now. So God doesn't need a convenient or a convenient situation to work. He can create a convenient situation. This is why God is 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 so powerful. God is not short of resources, but is short of willing hearts. Is short of believing hearts. This is why he says, you know, a mustard, even if you have a faith of a mustard seed, he can do amazing things. But the reason why we are where we are, whether our spiritual, our individual spiritual lives as a church, it's sad. The root problem is faith, is unbelief. There is no faith. And Jesus says, when he comes, shall the Son of Man find faith. And so to me, this is speaking to me individually. Um, all things, his promises are yea. You know, we should go with that attitude to say, we, 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 we go there and we thank God, even though we haven't received the things that we asked for. This is a sort of prayer that pleases God. You know, when you go there and thank God, you know, this is done before the eyes can see it, before we can have it. This is how God teaches us to pray, even when it comes to mission field. So throughout the Bible, throughout, he is just demonstrating that he is God. This is why he's not like one of us. God doesn't have to make things, you know, with us, we are human beings. You need to plan. You need to do this and this to be able to achieve A, B, C, D. Because we are human, we are flesh, we are finite, we cannot create. But God owns everything. He is the creator. So so really, this, there is a powerful uh, rebuke there on the faith. God is still asking us today, do you have faith? And it's sad that... Uh, just as how Jesus was disappointed with his disciples in his time, the same way he's disappointed with us today. He says, ye of little faith, ye, in most cases, he was rebuking people for lack of faith. But see what he says to the centurion. He says, I've never seen such faith. Great faith. Now the question is, what did the centurion do that really pleased Jesus? 
because he's the author and finisher of faith, you see. What did the centurion do or say? He says, speak the word only. And my servant shall be well. He says, speak. You don't have to come, master. I know you're a man of authority. You don't have to come to my house. Just speak. And Jesus was pleased with that man. And this is the same way Jesus is looking forward to see people like centurions who will read what God says and will run away with it. Say, God said it. It is done. Amen. 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 Brother Paul, please go ahead. Yeah, please. I, I, you know, talking about faith of a mustard seed. One of the first things that the Lord was showing me was faith. I didn't even know he was showing me. So I want to give a testimony. Sorry if it may take a few minutes, but I'm going to do my best to keep it short. Sometimes when we talk about the Lord, we can get a little bit overexcited and a bit more too enthusiastic. I do anyway. So when um, so five years before knowing God, I knew evil. And uh, we won't go into that part. So we're going to talk about faith and what God can do for us in any situation whatsoever and what, who we can use and what he can do. So I had a business idea. I started a business. I had a few grand, but nowhere near enough. Um, I got an investor. I'm, I'm obviously cutting, narrowing this right down. I got a business investor, and that business investor came in and put forty thousand on the table. Um, the business over the years um, never made any money, yet that that business partner put in between four hundred and fifty and five hundred thousand pounds, and she is a single parent with three kids, um, has her own house. And the Lord used her while he used all that time to bring me to know him. And I was like, wow, that is amazing. The Lord can use anybody to do anything for him. And just I want to say is um, the Lord gave me a message for her and he said, uh, tell Sam that everything will be okay. And so I went to Sam and I, I told her that. And, and we thought it was in the business. <laughs> but, but once again, the Lord is still training me. The business is not making any money. It's it, Well, we're hoping it's going to be okay. But, you know, it's been nine years and it's been, it's been tough. But most importantly, all that time has been spent with the Lord bringing me to know him and all the time over the over the past few years um, past four years he's been teaching me his ways and one of the things is that we we all know this but it's a case of you know pushing it home into our hearts and into our minds and to know for a fact that God can do whatever he likes he can do he can get people to do whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, we what my sister said earlier, you know, about the Lord, the tiniest little thing. He knows our needs. He will bring everything I want for nothing. There's hardly there's there's not enough money to bring this business in to keep this business afloat. Yet the Lord shit, my business partner stopped putting money into this business two and a half years ago. And this business is still going, and I do not know how. All I know is, is that God, every time I have asked him, every time I've gone to him, he has given me everything I need. I have a roof over my head. I have food in my belly. I have a car. I have fuel. I can drive to church whenever I want to. I can get to a point where there's no fuel. There's, there's no nothing. There's no money for the rent. There's nothing. And he gives it to me immediately because my my business doesn't bring in enough money for me to be paid. I haven't had a wage for three and a half years. He has given me every single thing that I have needed to keep me. We, we don't if we want for riches, we're just not really of God. You know, if you want for this big fancy dress and these designer shoes, you know, I've got nothing wrong with designer clothes. They're made better. They last longer. They feel better. They're more comfortable. They don't shrink in the wash. They don't, you know, lose their shape and all of this stuff. I've got no problem with that. What I'm saying is, is that 
if we are humble minded and we have a, a, a Christ like character in us, he wants us that we are his people. And he that faith, like the brother said, is it is the one thing that he chastised and a lot about was faith and the faith of a mustard seed. We, we must have faith in God. He's going to give us everything we need if we understand that. If we've got a cherished sin, it doesn't matter what it is. I don't care what it is. If you've got a child who's going off stray, you know, whatever it is, just be faithful. Remain in prayer. If God is not talking to you, there's a reason. So please just remain in faith. Build your faith. Trust in God and all things will be well with him for sure. You know, he's still not finished with me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Paul, for that powerful. Sorry, can I just say, my yeah. business partner, I spoke to her a few months ago, and I brought that up to her. She doesn't necessarily believe in God. I think she's pondering on the, the on, on all of it. And she, um, one thing about her, she never blasphemes God. She never uses his name in vain. Amen. And I said to her, I said, can you remember the message I gave you from God? And she said, yes. I said, he said that everything will be right with you. She said, yes. <clears throat> I said, tell me, has your life improved since then? She said, yes. I said, have you got a better house than you had since then? She said, yes. I said, is there anything you've wanted for since then? She said, no. Everything. She's got now a beautiful house on the Thames. Everything has increased. She does have a good job. She's a corporate accountant. She does have a very good job. But still, if the Lord, the Lord can give, the Lord can take away. He gave to her. Somebody doesn't even know him. He gave her everything she needs. Her three boys are in all good health. She's got a lovely house. She's, everything's gone for her. We need to be careful what we believe about God. We need to be careful what we say about offshoot churches and all this stuff. We need to be careful what we say about those in the Catholic Church. We need to have faith in God that he knows what he's doing with his people. And they are everywhere. He has shown me they are everywhere. God's children are everywhere. We need to be very careful how we judge other people. Very careful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Paul. Sister Dorothy, please go ahead. Thank you, Sister Judith. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And what beautiful testimonies from everyone. I just wanted to say that you are here, here, where he says here, he will reward honest, simple reliance upon him. And I have testified of the goodness of God and also how we are told that every unselfish prayer will be answered. God will never turn away an unselfish prayer. God is faithful. I have never lacked literature for evangelism. Right from when I was in Pentecostal church, before I became an Adventist, God always, he provided for me. I never lacked literature. And it's not easy to, for my husband who is, a non-Adventist to uh, to allow me to use money for or evangelism or for or petrol to you know to use my car to to go out specifically for evangelism. So I want to thank God because He, he has blessed me immensely. And not only me, I've seen other people being blessed. Remember COP26? I have never seen anything like that. Loud Cry Ministries was doing a distribution of the great controversy up here in Scotland. And that ministry was blessed. There was literature. So much of it, the storehouse and three angels farm, most of you are part of it. It's got a big barn, big, 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 big store. There were books there. And we distributed those books. They distributed the books in Glasgow City Centre, everywhere. 
around Glasgow, mm -hmm. the surrounding towns. And you know what? There were books left there. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of books of every kind. Ministry of Healing, Steps to Christ. Ah, the great controversy. And those of us who are engaged in, um, in literature evangelism, especially the great controversy, we went there and pi and piled. <laughs> we went there and piled our, our cars, our van sister Rhoda from up north. She actually went there to fill her car two times. Now, where did this money, where did these books come from? God provided. <laughs> it was it overflowed more than enough. And he wanted that work to be done in Scotland because those books, we up here, they were, they wanted to come and collect them and take them down south in England. But something just happened that was <laughs> really, really interesting that they actually didn't. But we took the books and gave them up. So I just wanted to say God is so faithful. And any ministry that is sincere, God will always, always provide. I just wanted to uh, give that testimony and say that any unselfish prayer, when we pray in faith, God is going to supply all our needs. Why would he not? He's the one who has sent us to go and be his witnesses, his disciples. He wants us to witness, so he'll provide. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, Sister Hope, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Sister Judith, and good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Uh, uh, perhaps I also have a testimony uh, of our God's faithfulness, and it's going to come from Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, uh, say verse 31 to 32, it says... What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. All things. Our God is faithful, but he's also looking for us. He wants us to be faithful. Um, I have a son who is incarcerated. He's been incarcerated for a while, but I hadn't seen him for five years. Uh, 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 the, the four years or the three years was COVID. And uh, the previous year I had gone home, the, previ the previous years. 2019 had gone home, so I was unable to see him. But look at these circumstances. It's amazing how God is. We have just to trust in him. Uh, we have a ministry. Uh, we normally go and visit people who are frail. Uh, those can be in church, those can be in hospitals, and those can be also in their homes. But God was impressing and he's saying to me, you go and you witness to others. What's happening to your home? Well, how about your son? Yeah. Now, this son of mine, he rings because we cannot ring. We cannot get in touch with him. He's, normally he rings. He rings me. He rings us or, my, or his sister. So this time I said, no, I was on my knees. You, you, you know, we have to be prayer mothers, prayer people. And, uh, but prayer goes with action. So anyway, I, I, I called on the phone and I, I ran the prison service and I made, uh, I made uh, um, an arrangement uh, to go and see him. And uh, God is good. And this period of time, I would not even have seen him, but I was given three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you had only two, uh, two hours, two hours of the visitations. So it was Sunday anyway. Okay. But to cut the story short was that I haven't been working since February, end of February. 
God has provided mm. some wonderful people and also people on this platform, on, on, on the forum, who've been supporting, who's been supportive. And when I was given the, uh, a, a time for visitation on, on, on Sunday, I went, my transport, there were circumstances, forbidding circumstances. And you're seeing things that are happening. Transport, you know, when you get in the middle of nowhere, you know when they take these wonderful children of ours, they take them far down in the country. And I had to get a coach and I had to get the train. And we're getting the train, the the the, the rail. And uh, I, in the middle, towards the end, they said there are no trains. And then you had to get a replacement bus. You don't know where you're going. It's mm -hmm. only God directing. I got to the end of the station where I needed to come off. There was nothing there, dead, apart from a butcher's, a butcher's shop. And I'm going, God, what is happening here? I go say, no, be still and know that I'm God. I went to the butchers, asked, how can I get to this place? They said, where well, we are butchers, we don't do with any train. Uh, with any taxis or whatever. There are people who live in the area. But I said, this is not going to deter me. Lord, show me. I stood there for over an hour. I think it must have been an hour and a half in the cold. It's really cold. And who turns up? I a man turns up. So I go to him and I said, listen, um, I'm here, but I don't know how to get to this place. And he goes, where are you going? I said, I'm going to this prison. He goes, oh, I can never leave this place because I'm at work. He was on the rail working. I said, okay. So he got onto the phone and he was trying to find out because he knew the area somehow. And then uh, he, he went on to his, his phone and he was try he's trying to search out for taxis uh, to get me to the place. So anyway, and I also followed suit uh, because I was looking for Uber. There's no Uber there. But God is wonderful. And you know what happened? Uh, we got the taxi, he came, and the taxi got me there. Meanwhile, my son had already, was the enemy was fighting him. And also he was fighting me prior. He was saying, mom, you're not coming to this place. I said, I'm going to come. If you can so, I'm still going to come. I'm going to sit on the four year. I'll still wait. Anyway. Uh, when I got there, uh, I had my finger trapped in the door of the car. I bashed the, the door and my finger caught, was caught in the car door. And thank God the door opened, but the excruciating pain. You know, what the enemy was thinking was trying to bring my mind to focus on that pain, to focus on the pain. Anyway. I said, no, Lord, all things work out for good for those who love you. I entered. Now, remember, when you're going for this visitation, actually, they need D, um, uh, ID, identification. And I had not, I, I went with my passport prior. I'd gone with my passport. It had expired. And, you know, we've been praying for my passport. And... Uh, also, I had, uh, in, in the process of my passport, I was given uh, fingerprints because I could not do a DBS. I could not do anything without the passport. Everything had failed. But uh, prior to leaving the house, I remember God said, go and get your fingerprints. You have your fingerprints. Go for your fingerprints. Anyway, I I took the fingerprint, the, the 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 form, the documentation with the fingerprints. But anyway, with my passport. So when I got to the uh, uh, reception, and I was praying, I was praying because remember, my passport had expired. God is so faithful. God is faithful. He blinded them completely of the date. All I saw, they asked me for my passport. I gave them my passport. But I was ready for, to give my fingerprints, but he never asked for the fingerprints. He said, come, mom, come, I'll take you in. But look at this. I go in, my son was waiting. 
and the table he God had prepared for us unbelievable the food <laughs> vegan food but look at this my son cooked a meal he cooked a meal nowhere in most prison you'd find someone cooking a meal and bringing it for the visitors no but God was working behind the scene and on my way back and I'm going God how am I going to spend, where am I going to get this money to take me back? Because we needed a taxi to take me back to the station. Ah, one of the inmates goes, can you take uh, my, son, my son's mom to where she needs to go in London? I was, I was, to God be the glory, to God be the glory. And they brought me, the family, they brought me, took me to the, I said, you can take me to the station because they were going to East London or West London, Sussex. I don't know what part of Sussex. I said, I'm happy with, uh, I'm, I'm happy with the station because I, I had a, a return ticket. But what I wanted to bring out is that I saw my son. God is not just about what things he gives us. And I always say that, I say, God, the, the possession of the things God gives us is not about those things he gives us. It's who he gave for us. The scripture is saying, if Christ, he, if he gave his son for us, what more would he be able to give us? So we need to ask God to increase our faith and to be able to Take his word. We have nothing else. Our road, when he gave that road, he was giving us his word. God is faithful to keep us. He's faithful in all, her, in, in all our endeavors. But we also have to be faithful to him. But I just thank God for everyone on the platform. I know it's prayers. People are praying. And there is more to come. Because our God is faithful. Amen. Amen, amen. Powerful, sister. Amen. Yes. We'll continue to pray for your son. Anyone else with anything to say? A testimony to share? Yes, good morning. Good morning, sister. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to share um, something. You know, we are, um, there are a few ministries who are teaching uh, regularly about moving to uh, the country. And uh, I have some friends of ours who um, took this journey to move to the country um, about maybe a space of three years ago and so forth. Now, I don't know for any of you, not that there is uh, impossibilities for God in the UK or anywhere in this world. However, I do know and we have experienced that doing a country living in the UK is quite a challenge in its totality. Uh, that's not to say it's not possible. And if God has that for some people here, then he'll make it uh, uh, possible. However, these friends of ours called us um, and uh, invited us to be able um, uh, to go and, and uh, visit the place. So we were in uh, Portugal. And my purpose also is to look at and see, because some people, they um, what they say that, look, they don't know where to begin, don't know where to start, and they have so many different circumstances. Sometimes you feel like you're in a tight corner. Um, and I've always taken it uh, that way, whether wherever it is that the Lord takes us, I try to investigate, um, you know, what's how others are doing what they're doing. Now, I don't know for any of you, but what I'm aware of is that there's a lot of people, especially people who uh, are not in the faith. Now, I know there's people who are in the faith who started and um, are in that journey, but there are more people not in any faith. Usually they're, you know, nature worshippers or they're into Buddhism or they're into this new age and so on and so forth, who've actually understood some of the times that we're living in and they have made so, so many sacrifices to go out, of, uh, to go out um, of the cities and go into the country. And many of the reasons they give 
are very, very similar to the reasons that we've been given um, from the word of God and spiritual prophecy anyway. So my purpose also while I was there um, was to, um, first of all, find out what kind of work is necessary, what kind of work um, are they doing there and what, what kind of work is this in terms of ministry and reaching out to people. Um, and we had arranged to go and visit certain people who are uh, living this sort of lifestyle um, and how they managed to move to to do this kind of lifestyle in the in the uh, countryside we got called to this place <laughs> I made an appointment with this uh, um, a group of people not realizing what to expect over there brethren it took us an hour to get there to the um, area but it took us an hour to climb the mountains where they were in a four by four. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Now, we had no idea what to expect there. We asked the necessary questions, but we didn't have any clue what to expect there. When we got there, we couldn't actually get down after an hour. We couldn't actually get down to them. Um, because we had to keep climbing, climbing, climbing. They were so high up in the mountains and many people were there that you could stand on top of where they were and you could see the city or you could see the, um, the view up to three hours down, even up to the bay. That's how high they were. But from the uh, bottom of the road, which is about an hour before we could climb, you can see nothing. All you see is mountains and all you see is trees. We got there, they were, <laughs> we had to go down to meet them. When we realized where they were, we found them. We had to leave the car somewhere and then we had to go down to where they were. And they said, look, the easiest way for you to come down here is to come down on your, you know, on your bottom. And I was with some friends and my daughter and um, uh, my friend's son and so on. We went down trying to bypass the thorns and all that kind of stuff on our bottoms to get them down there rather than walk all the way around, maybe five minutes to meet them again because we had already taken a long time. When we got there, these, these guys, they had come together as a, um, a group, a few of them, to purchase this sort of land. I asked this gentleman who was uh, the main, uh, um, the main uh, uh, guide for this area, how did he get to where he was? His story was amazing. He said he was from Lithuania. From Lithuania, somehow life happened. He ended up in Portugal. But as life happened with him, maybe he was about in the mid uh, 30s, maybe uh, 40 thereabouts. Strong young man. He said he used to live in the city, which was about an hour and a half away. But for years, he was on drugs and he was alcoholic. But during the time of COVID and all that kind of stuff, and then also a year, um, back about a year or two, um, about a year before we met him, he said he had had enough and he could not do this life. He was living in a box room, you know, little single rooms. He's paying over 500 pounds a month, sharing with other people um, in that house share. And plus bills on top of that. He said he was just a roller coaster going around like a zombie. And all he did was drink and take drugs. But he locked himself in this small room. Now, this is a person we don't know. He locked himself in this small room and he said something has to change. He made a determined decision that something had to change about his life or there is no other way. After one month, he said, he had come out of that room with a plan. Basically, he was just coming out to get, get something to eat and go back in. He didn't go outside anywhere and so on and so forth. So he came out and he, he came up with a plan. He said he prayed and then this land somehow came up on the computer. Now, when he said he prayed, I was thinking to myself, okay, so I asked him, are you a Christian? He said, no, I used to be Catholic, but I realized they were doing some funny things and I didn't want to be part of that anymore. So I left anything to do with religion or so. And now I am spiritual, he said. And so he started speaking about how, you know, we from the earth, we have to return to the earth and everything sounds good. And it is true. It's just they don't know about God. Guess what? While we were leaving to cut a short uh, um, a story short, they were showing us how they were 
clearing the land, how they made certain uh, decision, how they were coming together as a, as a group to try to prepare the land. And in terms of where they were living, they had actually erected teepees. I don't know if you know what teepees are. Most of you probably know. You know, these were what the Red Indians used to live in. I've got pictures. I said, I've got to show this to my brethren. <laughs> we went inside this teepee. This guy is there cooking, teaching us about cactus, teaching us about how to uh, medicine from the, uh, to sh showing us herbs, showing us also. He said, I've been damaging my body without realizing, but something said to me, I need to take a different journey. And so he, he'd been clean from drugs and from um, alcoholism for about a year. And he said, I cannot go back in that environment because I need to look after this body. You know, I could not believe what we're hearing. So on our way, he's showing us a different um, uh, places and what the plans that they have to do. Okay, they're into maybe this new age and nature worshipers and so on. When we were leaving, the man said, look, I have a, li I have a little gift for you, um, if you would accept it. We said, okay, what is, uh, what is the gift? You know, we're being polite. We're already aware that, you know, the, the you know, nature worship and so on. They don't know God. Very nice, young, very lovely person just been caught up in things like that. And that's why we cannot dismiss God's people. We cannot, because somebody said earlier, they are everywhere. But sometimes at Adventists, unfortunately, do forgive me. I don't say this uh, to be, you know, me, you know, to be anything. But this is for me personally, what I have had notified with myself. I don't know about anybody else. We sometimes almost like the Jews. We keep ourselves to ourselves. We don't go out to reach out to the people. And we think it's enough just to preach from the pulpit. It is not enough. Christ mingled and went and reached people. Desiring their good is what we were told. Listening to people's stories, hearing what is going on, then we can start to see by our character, our conduct, by mixing and mingling with the people, then the byways and highways. Anyway, this gentleman, we know he's been caught up in vices. While we were leaving, he said, does anybody here speak Portuguese? The young man that we went with speaks Portuguese. Out of this, I don't know how he pulled this car up to this mountain. It wasn't even a four by four. He goes into his vehicle. He started the vehicle with a fork. <laughs> um, he had buttered it, trying to get it up the hill, the mountains. And so when I say mountains, I mean mountains. He buttered it and then he started it with a fork to get it started. He started taking out these stones and crystals and so on and so forth. We said, okay, we said, okay, well, thank you. You know, there's a way to be polite and understanding why you're sending a good prayer to the Lord and so forth. So while we were leaving, he said, if anyone speaks Portuguese here, I have a little gift for you. We said, oh, okay. Guess what this man pulled out of this uh, buttered car? A Bible in Portuguese. Now, I don't know about any of you, but this man was freely sharing these little crystals and these stones that these are for healing, these are called this. He was into the whole, you know, back in the day, um, a worshiper of the Red Indians. He pulls out a Portuguese Bible and he said, let me give this to you. Not that he was studying it, you know, it was in this buttered car he hasn't gone in for months. He then says, here we go. Can I give you this and so on? Maybe it's something of interest for you to read. We didn't take any great controversy, unfortunately. We didn't take any reading, but you would never find this guy anywhere. And I don't know how, but the way to find him was through the locations and coordinates on the, rather than you know following roads. I could not believe my eyes. We took the little Bible, we took his little stones and crystals, Prayed over them, asked the Lord to remove anything that's on there, any prayers, blah, blah, blah. Because we did, you know, we wanted to be able to mingle, but not also to offend in any way. And it wasn't a challenge to our faith. How does a Bible stay in this vehicle for months? And while we are there, this man that you'll never be able to find gives us a Bible in Portuguese. I could not believe what I was seeing. So and he said, we want a community. We don't want to live by ourselves. Everybody's so individual, caught up with all these phones, being you know, followed everywhere. They gave us a course and understand on how to actually use these phones 
without having Google and so on and so forth, but still be able to connect, but without using the networks, without using the antennas, the Wi-Fis, it was unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. I said, Lord, some of your people are out there. They are wiser. You're right. They are wiser than the people of the world. And I could not understand how this man ministered to us with this little Bible, whether he didn't know it. I asked him, how did you know? Did you know we were uh, Christians? He said, no, are you Christians? We said, well, you have a Bible. How come? He said, I used to be Catholic, but I don't believe in any such stuff like this anymore. So we thought he knew that we were. Somehow he figured out we were Christians. No. What I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter where God is. He wants us to, in terms of this, what we're reading about, you know, what do you have? If you have strength, if you have the gift of speech, if you have an ability to reach people with a smile, with a kind word, God would take us far and near if we are willing to reach people. But this hidden business of just going up and down church every Sabbath, and then we go back to our comfort zone, it is not acceptable anymore. Christ's method was go into byways and highways, reach the people who are caught up in darkness and sin. This is a true medical missionary work. But the more you keep hiding and just preaching from the poor people, you're not reaching the people. You're not different from the Pharisees. May God bless us to be faithful, to pray, and also to take steps towards the life that he wants us to live but we discovered that we have a lot of work to do in these places because most people, and most of them are growing their own food, they're vegan, but they're into vegan movement. There is work to be done to reach these people who were doing 90% of what we should be doing, but we are filled with fear because everything has to be right. They take, we saw people of different budgets. They're living in teepees while clearing the land and planning to build. It was amazing. So I'm saying I have never seen anything like this in the UK. Maybe in other countries people have seen. But I'm saying this, that whatever we have in our hands, whether it is small finances, whether it is a gift or a talent, we have to use it for the ministry of God. It is no longer acceptable in the times we keep talking about we're living in to sit back and observe people dying and we're just regurgitating and reading the same thing again and again and again, years after year, but we're not doing anything. God is going to call us to account. May God have mercy on us. Thank you so much. I'm sorry about the time. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the passion you have. Yes, that we have to reach others. That's so true. Thank you, Sister V. We only have one minute left, and I wanted to sing that. We sing a song to close this. Uh, Brother Paul, I'll allow you to speak. And yeah, um, unless yeah, if you sister. okay to uh, I'll, I'll make... tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Go I'll, on then. I'll make it quick. Sorry. I just wanted to, there was such a, some amazing, very, very powerful testimonies. And thank you. And don't apologize for, for taking the time. The Lord wills it. Um, I just wanted to touch on country living. So as somebody that's new to, um, to God, Seventh Day Adventism and evangelism, and you know everything else to do with that. Um, I, I was watching. I, I mean, I, I do watch a lot of sermons, and and a couple of years ago, even more so. So two, three years ago, watching a lot of sermons, and I have to say, we all need to be very weary about all these sermons that we're watching, all these pastors, because I felt there was a lot of fear mongering going on, and um, oh, you know, get out of the cities, and I understand that it's the way, but here we are, you know, three years later, and um, and now we're hearing stories of people that have gone out into country living, and they've gone back again because it hasn't worked for them. So the law, I one one thing I want to say on that is, which I do believe, you know, that when I hear the truth, it really does penetrate into my heart, and one hundred percent, the Lord is saying to me, that's that's the truth, and here's the truth for you. We don't go living in the country and bring all our sin with us because it's not going to work. Living, Going and living in the country is all well and good, but don't take Babylon with you. So make sure it's like before somebody gets up and preaches in the pulpit. You better make sure your house is in order before you go and do it. So I just wanted to say on country living. So I was getting quite anxious about this and quite worried. And I was thinking, hey, man, I live in quite a big town. It's a very rough one at that. 
So I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, Lord, what do I do about this country living? He said, Paul, don't you be worried about that. I'll look after you. Don't worry about that. So once again, we're back to faith. Trust in God. Trust in God. Have faith in God. Do nothing without God. And I'm going to move on to evangelism. So we're not going out. That's because we're not praying enough. We're not praying enough. We don't have enough faith. So I go to the Lord. I go, Lord, I'm not seeing enough people. And it is killing me. I need to be spreading your word. And I'm not doing it. And I had a load of um, great controversy. I had a load of health messages. And then next door to me, literally a stone's throw away, is a new age church. I'm not sure what order they are. And I don't particularly care about all that. It's, for me, it's just brain dead material. So they are they do their thing over there. And there's a huge car park. And there's got to be over 30 cars. And I'm standing outside and I'm watching them. And the Lord says to me, um, how about you go and give some information over there? And I'm like, what? I'm like, no, no, I can't. I can't do that. There's no way I could do that. They're all going to see me. I couldn't do that. And he's like, no. I said, Lord, if you want me to do that, you're going to have to give me the strength to do that. Next thing I know, I come in, I pick up all the health messages. I've got I pick up a load of health. I've got hundreds of them. And I pick up the health messages and I go out and I'm putting them on all the car window screens. Now, literally, they're, they're, all the lights are on. They can all see me, and I'm like, Lord, they're going to come out and start a riot if I'm doing all this stuff. <laughs> they're going to come out and start saying things to me. Well, anyway, I went around every single car, security lights coming on and everything. Nobody came out. Nobody saw me. So I was like, amen, Lord. So I came back. I went in. I sat down, and I was so happy that I'd gone and done that. And the Lord comes to me. He goes, oh, you're not finished yet, Paul. I was like, pardon me? So you, you've got great controversy books there. And I said, oh, yeah, so I have. He said, come on, let's go. And I was like, no. And the Lord just took me. The Lord took me. And he went, right, let's go. And we took them. And I gave out over 30 great controversies. So there's over 30 health messages and 30 great controversies on all of the cars, including the pastor, including all the people that were there. They all got it. And I came back and I was like, amen. And that was all down to God. We, What can we do good? Can I hear you? Nothing. All good things come through God. So if we want to evangelize, if we want to go and live in the country, if we want to do all these things, take it to God. Because we are but dirty rags. We can do nothing good. And I'm only, sh I'm only sharing with you what the Lord has shown me as somebody under his wing, somebody that he's training for whatever job that might be. I don't know and I don't particularly care because whatever it is, I'm doing it. And so I am only teaching you, or it's not teaching you, sorry, because I'm not teaching none of you how to suck eggs. If anything, it's about bringing remembrance to you, because all you guys are all highly experienced. I'm the baby here as far as, you know, um, God is concerned. And I'm just trying to share with you the stuff that he gives me. And it's all about faith, 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 prayer, prayer, prayer. Go to God every second, not every hour, every second, every second. And amen to that. Brethren, amen. Amen, amen. Yes, we are still learning, even when we are in, we've been in the faith for long, but we never cease to learn because God continues to reveal new things to us and to help us, our characters to, you know, to improve each and every day. Thank you so much for all the powerful testimonies which have been shared today. Uh, I'm sure we are all encouraged. Um, we will close now. Um, so tomorrow we'll be just reading the last two paragraphs. And maybe, I mean, usually we don't give homework, but I think it would be nice if people can contemplate on what we have learned in this lesson. And if they can come and share what actually stood out for them throughout this reading maybe one point tomorrow which you would want to share um yeah with these thoughts can I, um a volunteer pray to close for us any volunteer please let us pray Thank you so much, Sister Judith, for that powerful leading. To our Father, what in heaven this morning, 
Lord, we want to thank you for taking the time together with us to walk with us through this journey of uh, digging into the deeper shafts of this gold that you've given us. We wouldn't be knowing this unless we take an action to come to you and to mm -hmm. spend time with you. And thank you that you've allowed us, Lord, to have such beautiful and wonderful, encouraging moments that we can learn together at your feet. Mm -hmm. Please help us that as we depart from this line this morning, that, Lord, you take us to different places of worship today. And may, as the message this morning, may our minds, our thoughts be centered on the word and your word and not be hijacked by the enemy when we are sitting in the congregations where you are taking us today. But Lord yeah. God, help us that our minds will not want, I will not be you know, hijacked by this enemy, but put our minds to subjection yeah. and put our, our hearts, our feelings to subjection, Lord, that the Holy Spirit have his way yeah. through the words that you have prepared for all of us in our different, different places where we are going to worship. Some are going to speak the word, Father, uh, we commit elder desire, in your hands, my father, as he goes to represent you, Lord Jesus. Speak through him and many other speakers today in different places. Some will give intercessory prayer. Pray through them, Lord Jesus, because you prayed for all of us in John 17. And mm -hmm. you are still interceding on our behalf as a high priest in the Holy of Holies. So Lord, pray with them that are chosen to do the intercessory prayer. And be with each and every member of Father, from the smallest baby to the eldest in every congregation. Oh, Father, I pray that you arrest all the powers of darkness. Don't allow them to hover or to come in the places of worship. Whether people are worshiping under a tree, they don't have a building. May we be surrounded by your holy angels from above. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Happy Sabbath. I hand over to Brother Desire. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you for uh, such a spirit-filled uh, uh, session. May God bless you, Brooklyn, uh, wherever you are going to spend the Sabbath today. Uh, let's keep uh, each other in prayer and uh, let's pray for our churches for our congregations when we go there we're there to intercede for one another may god bless you brother and i'm looking forward to pick up from uh to picking up from where we left this morning um i know it's um it's it's one step one paragraph at a time two paragraphs let's not rush let's clean whatever the lord will have us to learn we're not rushing amen god bless you brother uh, the platform is open for Sabbath school. And those who are not able to join uh, their churches for one reason or the other, Sabbath school will be open. Uh, this quarter is actually very interesting. It's a great controversy. Uh, we're studying the great controversy and uh, what a timely lesson. So please do, 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 do your studying before uh, you join Sabbath school, whether at your churches or can... Um, help each other and also the platform is closed or however for the midday because uh, most people get uh, their local churches but in the evening we have the uh, the um, Adventist home first I'm going to ask um, um, I know we have a half night prayer uh, can you just remind us please uh, who is on um, is it uh, Sister Sylvia or Sister Metron or Elders Yambe? I'm not sure who is on. Can uh, give us what's the starting time for the half night prayer? 
Yeah, I think you have that. So half night prayer starts at eight o'clock till midnight, and we will have different mm -hmm. presenters uh, presenting each hour and um, singing testimonies and praying as well. Um, Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Please don't miss out uh, on the sweet hour of prayer. Amen. God bless you, brother, and have a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you, Sister Sophie. And thank you, Sister Judith, as well. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 And happy Sabbath. Everyone. God bless. God bless. Happy Sabbath, Sabbath brethren. Blessings. Happy Sabbath, everyone. And there's Adventist home at, at seven o'clock before then. Amen. Amen.